Greetings everyone. My name is Laurenti Smith from Laurenti Smith Art Studio. And today I want to reveal one of my latest paintings that I've been painting um, at the end of this video. But I also want to talk to you today about a topic that sometimes can be a little difficult to talk about. And that topic is sin. Yes, we're going to talk about breaking the power of habitual sin from over your life. How do we break that power from over our lives through Jesus? We can only break it through Jesus. And so I want to say a poem that God has given me as it relates to habitual sin. And I want you to pay attention to this poem and ask yourself, if you can relate to this poem, pay attention to the words of this poem because it talks about the process of freedom and breaking free from habitual sin. The poem is entitled, Free Indeed. Have you ever had a habit you tried with all your might to break? And then as soon as things are going well, the promise you somehow sake? Have you ever fell in a hole and you were trying to climb out, but as soon as you're out, you slip again when God's Spirit said, look out? Have you ever felt so sick and disgusted of the sin you've done, sick of the hurt, sick of the pain, when you feel the battle can't be one? Have you ever asked the Lord for one last chance and forgiveness over again? And once again, though not deserving his forgiveness and grace, he sends. Everyone has at some point walked this road. Well, I do know that I know it well. It's a road created way back in the garden when Eve and Adam fell. And on this road consists of the same old twist so that you think you're in control. But unfortunately, despite familiarity, you fall in the same old hole. Here's the good news. When you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you realize that very hour, you cannot overcome in your own strength. You do not have the power. You will begin to walk with your head held up instead of your head bent down. And although it's a process, it is the first step in not falling again on the ground. You must then fight to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Be not fighting merely to just be delivered. You're fighting for your life. And when you remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, your spirit will be renewed and strengthened and your mind will be made bold. So the next time you're walking down a new road, praising God that you're finally free, remember we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And when the devil tempts you, says you lost and attempts, to sow negative seed, know that whom the Son has set free is forever free indeed. So the Lord gave me that poem some years ago, um, dealing with the power of, of, of habitual sin. And I want to talk about how do we break this oppressive, 
uh, a cycle over our life? How do we break this oppressive spirit over our life that comes in the form of habitual sin? Now, when I say the word sin, there are many things that may be coming to your mind. For some persons, it may be lust, pornography, fornication, adultery. Some persons may think of failure, judgment, condemnation. A lot of times we think about a lot of different uh, 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 things as it relates to sin, but I'm going to ask good old Google the technical definition of sin. And Google says sin is an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. And so who sets the law in our lives? Jesus Christ sets the law in our lives. So sin can also be referred to as unrighteousness. So what is the problem of habitual sin? Let me explain to you the problem with habitual sin. Sin separates us from intimacy with God. As believers, we want to grow in right standing with God. We want to grow in righteousness. We want to grow in our relationship with God. We want to grow in our intimacy with God. But sin separates us from intimacy with God. We cannot be in God's presence and, and be intimate with God when we are practicing habitual sin in our life. Um, you know, I have good news for you. I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm not here to uh, uh, point fingers at anyone, but I'm here because I have great news, and that is God can help you break free from those habitual sins in your life. Um, another problem with sin is usually when we sin, we feel feelings like condemnation, we feel a lot of guilt. Sometimes we don't even want to go in God's presence. Sometimes persons say, you know, I'm going to get my life back together. Um, before I become saved or before I turn back to God. But that is really a lie from the pit of hell because you cannot be righteous except through God. God is the only one. The power of God is the only thing that can break habitual sin from your life. So when we're sinning, we tend to want to run away from God and the enemy tells us that we're not good enough to be in his presence. The enemy tells us that we're not worthy. He, he tells us all of these lies so that we can run away from God because he knows that the only way we can be set free is if we run to God. And so I want you to know that God has already died on the cross for your sins. When he died, he died not only for your sins, but he got the keys to death, hell, death, hell, and the grave. And so today, I want you to know that you can be set free from habitual sin. So, we want to grow in right standing with God. We want to grow in relationship with God. Today, I'm going to give you about four tips, or five tips, on how to break free from the power of habitual sin. The first tip I'm going to give you is to seek genuine repentance. Yes, repentance has to be genuine. What do I mean when I say genuine? You have to really have a heart of wanting to turn away from your sin. You have to ask God for forgiveness and make an effort to turn away from that sin. Gen only only God knows the condition of a man's heart. You know, we, we don't know the condition of a man's heart. I don't know the condition of someone else's heart, but God. But he knows when we generally are sorry about the sin that we've committed in our life and we, we want to turn um, back to him and we want to pursue righteousness. He knows when we're genuine. So we want to seek genuine repentance, you know. In 2 Corinthians uh, 7 verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. This tells us that God desires for us to come to him when we sin. He wants us to 
submit ourselves. He wants us to humble ourselves. And he promised that if my people will do this, I will heal their land. First John 1 verse 7 through 9 says, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It doesn't say some unrighteousness. It says all unrighteousness. Sometimes we like to put sin in categories and we say, okay, well, lying is a little sin, but adultery is a big sin. Or fornication is a big sin, but gossiping is a little sin. Or even, even gluttony. So we don't want to put sin in a category and say, okay, God, you can forgive me for my lying and my gossiping, but I don't think that you're big enough to forgive me from, for murder. Or, or for something, Lord forbid, rape or sin that we would deem to be great. Um, God can forgive you from all of your sins. The verse that he is faithful and he's just to cleanse you from your sin and forgive you from all, all, all unrighteousness. And so I am excited about that. So step number one is to seek genuine repentance and ask God forgiveness. Step number two would be to spend time in the word of God. The Bible says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. And how is our minds renewed? We can only wash our minds and our minds can only be renewed through the word of God. Um, um, reading the word of God, listening to the word of God, um, memorizing scripture that can help us to combat sin. There's a scripture that says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I, I, am, um, I know that when we sin, or oftentimes we hear voices, um, the devil speaks into our ears and he says, oh, you will always be in the sin, or you don't have the power to break free or God is not with you, or you're not good enough. And he, he, he talks to us in our ears, you know, but do you know that every voice that you hear does not, every thought that you have does not belong to you? Every thought that you have does not necessarily belong to you. Sometimes the enemy plants thoughts and seeds in our minds to keep us from coming into intimacy with God, to keep us from really growing in our relationship with God. So we want to be aware of that. We want to seek genuine repentance, ask God's forgiveness, but we also want to spend time in the word of God. We cannot be righteous except through God. There's a verse that says, in our most righteous state, we are still as filthy rights. What does that tell me? That verse tells me that I have to be reliant on God even to be righteous. I cannot be righteous in my own strength. I have to be dependent on God, all right, in order to, to be the woman of God that he wants me to be, in order to go in the direction that he would even want me to go, in order to even fill my, my purpose, to fulfill your purpose. You have to be yielded to the word of God and the will of God because he knows um, why you hear, you know, more than you. Um, Dr. Monroe always says, uh, no one knows the product like the manufacturing. God knows you more than anyone else in the world. He knows what your struggles are. He knows what your desires are. He knows what your wants and your needs and he knows your goals, your ambitions. He knows you even better than you know yourself. And so with a loving God like this, we have to know that he wants us to be free from the power of sin over our lives. The next step, I would say, is to take the power away from that secret sin, habitual sin. Usually habitual sin is usually secret sin. And how do we take that power away from the sin? Tell someone about it, not just anybody. When you, when, you, when you tell someone about your sin, make sure it's someone that you are 
um, that, that you can be accountable to, someone that can encourage you, someone that can speak life into you, someone that can mentor you, someone that can, 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 can take your hand and help you walk um, along this Christian holy practice guide you, someone that you can trust, someone that's fundamental, you take that power away. to continue our sin but tell someone about it and make sure it's a person that prayed about it make sure it's a person that God needs you to that you can um can tell about the sin and someone that can actually hold you accountable and another point I would say is to be very aware of yourself be aware of your surroundings what does this mean this means that in being aware of yourself, I want you to be aware of the situations and the circumstances in your life that will cause you to sin. You may think to yourself, okay, when I go out with this group of girls, I end up sinning. Or when I grow, go out with this group of guys, I end up sinning. Or, you know, um, this friend tempts me with marijuana or whatever, or drugs, whatever it may be. Be aware of the situations in your life that cause you to sin, all right? In being aware, then we are able to set appropriate boundaries so we don't put ourselves back in that situation or back in the hot seat where we were before that would cause us to sin. And so all of these are tips in helping to break the power of habitual sin. But I want to tell you today, that God has promised that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I want to encourage you today to seek God, resist the devil, and the devil will flee from you. I want to encourage you today to submit to God. Um, the Bible says, if my people will call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Humble yourself, pray, seek God's face. And God says he will hear from heaven, forgive your sins, and even heal your land. So no matter what you're going through today, know that in, through God and through his power, you can be free indeed. God bless.